I'm going to talk briefly a little bit about kites, and I'm going to show just a couple examples, but be before that, I'm going to show you something on how kites uh, have some unique things to it. I'm going to clone this. I'm going to slide it over here, and I'm going to rotate or flip it, basically. I'm going to flip it left to right. Now, when I cloned it, I had the exact same angles, the exact same sides, and everything. So I just reflected it. Reflected it means make a mirror image. And then I just line it up just like this, and I have two identical triangles. Now, these triangles are identical um, because I cloned it. You saw that. But we also know something else. So we can start with some givens. I'm going to say this side is given to this side. This one is congruent to this side. So we have consecutive sides. Here's a side, here's a side here. We call that consecutive because they touch right here, are congruent. We have consecutive sides here and here that are congruent because they touch right here. And we have our third side that is congruent to itself. So we know that these three triangles, I mean, these two triangles are congruent. Now let's take a look at something else here. Here's the formal definition. Has exactly two pairs of consecutive sides. Here and here are consecutive and here and here are consecutive, exactly two. Diagonals are perpendicular. Well, we know that because guess what? When we did this and we were to actually draw this, we would have um, two uh, congruent right triangles right there. So this forms a right angle and one pair of opposite angles are congruent. And it would be the, this pair right here. This right here would be congruent uh, to the other side. This right here is congruent to this opposite side right here because I reflected the triangles. Now these guys are not going to be congruent because this tr little angle is congruent to this angle. This angle is congruent to this one, so on. So let's take a look at our first example. Here we have a uh, kite, uh, WXY is 104. So WXY, this whole thing is 104. So going off my definition, I know this whole thing is going to be 104 also, okay? V, Y, Z, so V, Y, Z, this guy right here is 49. Based on what I know that these are going to be congruent triangles, so corresponding parts are going to be congruent, I know this is also 49, all right? Other definition, I know this is 90, so all these are 90. And I want to find my remaining angles. Well, if this is 90, that's 49. I can find this guy right here. This one right here is going to be basically 90 minus 49, which is 41. Okay, and whatever leftover is 41, so there's going to be um, 63, is it? Yeah, 63. So it's 63 right here. And of course, since these are congruent, that's 63 and that's 41. Now I have 90, 63, and then this leftover right here, so that's going to be, what, 27? So this is going to be 27. It bisects because of the nature of congruent triangles. We know that these two triangles are congruent to each other. Since they're the same, this bisects. This whole thing is going to be 54. So I actually did not look up here and see what we're supposed to find out. VZY, VZY, 41. So that's 41. Okay. Um, XWZ, XWZ, 54. Okay. And VXW, VXW, that's going to be my 41, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one. And a few of y'all were looking at this and going, oh, no, what do I do here? It's when you know two sides of a right triangle, you can find the third. That's all it is. So I have, here's my right triangle. Here's my hypotenuse. Here's one of the legs. I'm looking for this one right here. And again, I didn't really pay attention to what I'm supposed to look for. I just kind of find everything. So I'm going to have h squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And since I'm going to be dealing with some interesting numbers here, I can tell already this is not a triple. So I'm going to do 24 squared minus 8 squared. And I'll do that on the calculator over here for you. Watch this. 24 squared minus 8 squared gives me 512. So well, I'm going to take the square root of that to find it. So I go shift there, 512, enter. And it's 16 radical 2. So this side right here, and since we know these are the same because they are congruent triangles, this is 16 radical 2 right here. Well, I could do this and do F to D and come up with 22.63 or whatever, but I'm going to stick exact just for the fun of it. 
Well, I found this one. Guess what? I have another right triangle right here. So I'm going to have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm going to have 16 radical 2 squared. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Very important. I just don't want to square that part. Plus 32 squared is equal to some big old number. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do my parentheses. 16 shift radical 2 parentheses. I have to tab over, hit the square button, plus 32 squared. And why do I have a syntax error? Oh, I did not put the parentheses. Well, let's delete it all. Delete, delete everything. And it's just one of those days. 16 shift radical 2 parentheses squared plus 32 squared. And 1536, I'll take the square root of that. And I get 16 radical 6. So this side right here is 16 radical 6, or if I wanted to do that, about 39.2-ish. All right, so that's how you find all these sides. I prefer exact until the very, very end is when you can round. Um, and if you rounded here and then you rounded here, you would not get quite close to 39.2, maybe 39.3 or whatever, or 4, so on. Okay, so that's pretty much it for kites. I will catch you all later.